Wilson! Wilson! My name is Charles. This is embarrassing. You're embarrassing yourself. Oh, calm down, ETA. I'm just joking. My name is Charles. Oh, of course it is. But no, it's ETA. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Business Blaze. I am your boy with the blaze. My name is Simon. This is uh, uh, ETA. He is joining us in the video as my co-host. Everyone loves it when he makes an appearance. Woo! Wow, that didn't fall down. Danny has written us a script. This is all about the infomercial scam king. King. Danny actually came up with this idea. Normally, I come up with the ideas, or you know, I go to the comments, or we just make a continuation of a video we previously made when I'm feeling particularly lazy. But Danny was like, Simon, I heard of this infomercial scam king, and you should go check it out. By the way, if you'd like to watch a YouTube channel about scams, which uh, isn't. Sh you should definitely check out the channel CoffeeZilla. I watch it all the time. It's probably my favorite channel on YouTube right now. I'd like to think that there's a giant sinister building located just outside of Silicon Valley called the Corporate Company Corporation Prison, or CCCP for short. <laughs> Danny, we're talking about communism again. Every god, if you're new here, somehow, it seems like every other video, Danny somehow brings it around communism, and I don't know why. It's the solution. Oh, Oh, I know this isn't... And people have been in the comments, why do you have to make this political? Why has this got political? Stop talking about politics. Stop insulting Trump. And I'm like, it's my channel. I'll do whatever the f I want. If you don't like it, f don't watch. <laughs> All right? As the rain lashes down... Oh, we're telling a story. On the giant security gates and the barbed wire fencing, the inmates of CCCP are settling down for another quiet night in. There are some of the most notorious corporate fraudsters of the modern world, and most of them are trying to keep themselves busy. Billy McFarland is wandering around the TV room. He's the fire festival guy. Oh! Desperately trying to sell tickets for the next fire festival. Him and Ja Rule, allegedly. Um, the farmer bro is discreetly using his contraband smartphone to keep tabs on his business and fire anyone who says anything mean about him. Over in the corner, a group of long-term residents are sitting at a hope Bernie Enron's... Bernie Enron. <laughs> Bernie Madoff's in here. Oh, uh... If you're new here, I, I, I have a selection of mugs. Someone sent me an FBI mug. I have a Three Wolf mug, but I always come back to the Enron mug because I just made an offhand comment that coffee tastes better in the remains of someone's dreams. <laughs> I had no idea that would be such a popular meme. Jeffrey Skilling from Enron is banging on again about how to mark, how mark to market accounting is perfectly legitimate accounting model, while Dennis Kozlowski from the Tyco Corporation is reminiscing about the birthday bash he threw for his wife, the one with the vodka pissing ice sculpture of David, statue of David. Now, if you're new here, uh, Danny actually sent me an email along with a script and was like, Simon, I've included a lot of in jokes. <laughs> at the beginning of the latest business play script so i think anyone who accidentally stumbles across this one is going to be uh, is going to be largely disappointed and uh, all i can say is i'm sorry to disappoint you there's an empty chair oh my god they continue though <laughs> there's an empty chair at the table which appears to have been reserved for El elizabeth Holmes from therano oh she's going to prison maybe allegedly uh, which is a bit weird because you usually don't get mixed gender prisons but that super deep voice may have caused a bit of confusion and there's also a new face at the table that looks vaguely familiar to some of the inmates, but they can't quite place it. Jeff Skilling from Enron leans over and asks him for the story. I don't think, I think Jeff Skilling is actually out of prison now. If you're watching, hey Jeff, I mean, you're not. I'm just saying because you're out of prison now, you can watch YouTube. You're probably like, whoa, you can watch videos on the internet? Sh Classic Jeff. In response, the man from Massachusetts, known to some as Kevin Trudeau, but also known by the nickname the infomercial Scan Kim King, shakes his head sadly. He says, I'm only here because I told you what they didn't want to know. All right, does that even make sense? I think infomercials are largely an American thing. Up until the year 2009, the concept of infomercials or teleshopping wasn't even allowed in the UK. Wait, yeah, it was. Like, there was definitely the shopping channel when I was growing up. It was on, like, channel 600. Uh, the very idea of purposely sitting down to watch a program-length commercial that rambles on for either 30 or 60 minutes is quite bizarre. Back in the 90s, it was quite uh, it was quite common for US television stations to fill up the overnight hours with cheesy extended marketing, and I suppose they could get away with it back in those days because there wasn't much else happening on the other channels at 3 a.m. I've fallen, and I can't get up! Now I'm doubting myself as to whether there was actually a shopping channel, or I'm just imagining it and, like, having a false memory based on American movies I've seen. 
Hey other British people, was there a shopping channel on like Sky TV in the 90s, early 2000s? I feel like there was, but maybe I'm crazy. Kevin Trudeau's path to becoming not just a regular face uh, on TV for American insomniacs, but also a best-selling author was quite crooked from the beginning. I have to say there's another channel I watch from a chap called Mike Winnett, and uh, I don't know, for some reason I find these like scam YouTube channels, like mostly what I watch on YouTube these days are car YouTubers, and I watch scam YouTubers. I don't know why it's so ridiculously appealing. Mike Winnett has a video where he becomes a best-selling author with a blank book just to prove that you can. And it's like, the guy's a legend. You should definitely check out his channel. I'll link, I'd link to it below, but I'm really lazy if you watch this. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> well, maybe not the very beginning. Born in 1963 and raised by adopted parents, young Kevin was voted the student most likely to succeed in 1981. Oh God, I remember my school yearbook story. I was voted most likely to bring down the government and most likely to appear on the front page, probably for bringing down the government. And I was like, I don't know if that's good or bad, really, to be honest. So far, it's a work in progress. <laughs> But things went downhill from there. His first job as a used car salesman was probably the most honest and respectable thing to appear on his CV. Used car salesman. The most honest thing on your CV. But a boom boom He's, he later moved into the seminar circuit, flogging amazing memory improvement techniques, but it seems that he carelessly forgot about a few important laws along the way. In fact, during the early 1990s, before he even turned 30, Kevin had already served two separate jail sentences. Oh, sh**. He now claims that he only ever served a few days in, days in jail, but that seems unlikely. That seems like something that's fairly readily look up a bull. Is that how you say look up a bull? ETA? I'm not your fucking assistant. All right, steady on. In 1990, he had walked into a bank posing as a doctor and deposited $80,000 in completely fraudulent checks, leading to a 30-day jail sentence. What? 30 days? For that? This is America. Come on, guys. He's got to get at least 19 years. Just a year later, he was found guilty of stealing the names and social security numbers of 11 of his mega memory customers and charging them more than $122,000 on their credit cards, leading to another two-year sentence. Wow. Wait, so he gets 30 days for 80,000, but he gets two years for 100. Well, I guess this is his second defense, isn't it? I still feel like he could have got more. <laughs> Kevin, I mean, it's not like, it's not, you know, that's definitely an upward trend of crime. Kevin later laughed off these spells in prison as simple misunderstandings, which were largely down to the incompetency of bank officials. He even claims that he wasn't really posing as a doctor. He'd just jokingly introduced himself as a doctor in memory. Does he? It's like, yeah, no. So, so you're a neurologist? No, no, no doctor of memory. <laughs> the good news is that by 1996, Kevin had clearly learned his lesson and was determined to set up a legitimate business. He co-founded a multi-level marketing program. Oh God, he did. Ah, legitimate business. Simon, I have a business idea for you. Let's get coffee. No ETA. We talked about this. Oh Jesus Christ. There's pyramids everywhere with you. Oh no. My dreams. What have you done to my dreams? You sicko. Amazingly, I didn't plan that. I just stacked those up at the beginning of the episode and was like, I'm sure I could do something with that throughout the show <laughs> because I don't read these ahead. Could you tell? So he started this multi-level marketing program called Nutrition for Life, which was supposed to be concerned with the development and distribution of nutrition supplements. It sounds like a company that I won't name that is ultra famous. Uh, that I'm fairly sure John Oliver has done a piece because he's got HBO's lawyers behind him. But uh, yeah, that company is allegedly a pyramid scheme, am I right? That, co that, that company which will remain absolutely nameless. But there turns out to be another small problem there. The aggressive sales techniques and recruitment practices of Nutrition for Life caught the attention of the US Securities and Exchange Commission, oh dear, and several US states uh, who sued the company on the grounds that the program was nothing more than a pyramid scheme. Nutrition for Life agreed to change their tactics and settled with eight US states for $185,000. I feel like this guy getting away with a lot for a little. It was during the 1990s that Kevin Trudeau first began making his infamous infomercials. In fact, over the years, he's believed to have recorded over a thousand different long-form commercials, promoting over 50 completely different products, although not all of them were broadcast. It's a bit like that here at Business Blaze, it is. Simon usually records about 50 different episodes a week, but only three of them get posted to YouTube. Yeah, I mean, it's a very wasteful model, but you know, look at this. Look at this. You're clearly 
getting the creme de la creme of content. There are 47 episodes that are rejected every week because they're just not up to this incredible level. Right, ETA? Dream on you and funny fuck. Kevin certainly had some sort of persuasive talent. He had the sales patter, the cheese, and the disingenuous grin. <laughs> uh, in a funny kind of way, the former car salesman was pro probably born to become the king of the twilight broadcasting hours. And speaking of selling shit in an infomercial, have you noticed how I am wearing my own face? You can purchase a shirt with my face. I, I guess if you're insane, at perchthemerch.co. The co is for Columbia, also known as cocaine. I mean, Columbia's not known as cocaine. They are just known for cocaine. So I wanna, if we were playing word association, people would be like, you know, uh, Argentina, steak, the UK, tea, Columbia, uh, cocaine, obviously. Uh, Kevin certainly has some sort of persuasive talent. Uh, but, 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 but my God, he was hawking some weird shit. Kevin didn't go down the usual route of selling surgical steel kitchen knives or deep sea diving timepieces. Instead, he was more of a modern day version of the 19th century patent medicine peddlers. He sold alternative therapies, self help solutions, conspiracy theories, and the secrets that they don't want you to know. I heard about the, uh, the, the thing that protects you from 5G causing COVID. It's amazing. No, it doesn't. We talked about this. It's like a USB thing that you plug into your computer and it creates this magical bubble around you to protect you from 5G COVID. And it's like, someone took it apart, it was just like, it's a USB stick. <laughs> and immediately like, yeah, no <laughs> it is. <laughs> me people in there and it was hundreds of dollars kevin was still quite keen on the memory improvement thing his mega memory training program promised a series of 30 minute lessons which will unleash your superpower memory for the first time i will unleash your superpower memory for the first time here it'll take me 20 seconds there's a thing called a memory palace what you do is you imagine somewhere you know really really well like the house you grew up in or the house you live now or where you went to school and as you go through the place you imagine things in there so okay so on the table on the left is a car Cup. Next to the cup, there is a lamp. Next to the lamp, there is a speaker. And then you can go and attach things to those things. So you can attach to the lamp the number 42. You can attach to the speaker the number 12. And then you remember all of these things. It's truly incredible. Now when you play that game, Mrs. Jones goes shopping and she buys a cup and a lamp and a speaker. You will be able to go into the hundreds and dominate everyone. There you go. You're welcome. Don't buy anyone else's bullshit. Also, I, I memorized pi to like a hundred and something digits using that while I was bored on ski lifts when I was skiing a couple of years ago. It's truly an incredible thing and I am not a particularly smart man. Stay tuned, get a pencil and paper, and in the next 30 minutes you'll be able to take a test to find out just how good your memory really is and learn to unleash the power of your own mega memory. Featuring Kevin Trudeau, author, lecturer, and America's foremost memory expert. Yeah, but, 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 but he also shot, sold a sh of other wacky services for gullible late night viewers. For example, Dr. Callahan's addiction breaking system. This will cure alcoholism, overeating, cocaine and heroin addiction, and cigarette smoking unless why would anyone want to cure a cocaine addiction? That's just weird. <laughs> Wilson! Uh, the perfect lift non-surgical facelift. Oh my god. Get an instant facelift with no surgery or no, and no needles. The sable hair farming system. This will finally end baldness in the human race. Well, that didn't take off, did it? Uh, mega reading, speed reading program. Learn how to read things 10 times faster, even if you're brain da- Oh my god, even if you're brain damaged? Dude. Eden's secret nature purifying product. Cleans your body of toxic waste matters and purifies your blood supply. And it cures PMS and some other diseases. Oh, and it causes weight loss. All right, dude, these are clearly just lies, allegedly. Wait, he went to prison for this, right? Yeah, not allegedly, they're just lies. On top of this, he also sold magnetic mattress pads, crocodile protein pills, magnetic toe rings, and something called biotape, which may have just looked like standard adhesive tape, but the idea was that you stuck it to yourself and it helped to relieve pain by re-establishing broken electrical connections in your body. Guys. Also, you know that that colored tape that all the athletes put on? There's no science, the, the, the science behind that, I won't say there's no science, but it is just, it's it's placebo allegedly uh, i made a whole video about this on today i found out so far so good except of course that this stuff was complete bollocks and none of it worked and it didn't take long for the ftc to start squinting suspiciously suspiciously at some of the compelling but utterly bogus claims that kevin was making every night to the american viewing public in 1998 kevin was fined five hundred thousand dollars in relation to six of these misleading infomercials and ordered to refrain from producing them unless it could be backed up by competent and reliable evidence 
Kevin agreed to adhere to these instructions, and everybody lived happily ever after. The fact that we've got like seven pages left on this script indicates that no, they didn't. Did they, Danny? Well, for a short while at least. Just because, because just a few years later, Kevin seemed to completely forget these court orders, uh, which was another surprising lapse from the supposed mega memory man. But a boom boom. By 2003, he had decided that taking coral calcium was the catch-all cure to every illness in the world. This included heart disease, multiple sclerosis, and most impressively of all, cancer. Which is why we obviously don't have cancer anymore. Which is great! Thanks... God, what was his name? Kevin? You walk up to someone, you shake hands, that person gives you their name. And then as soon as that handshake breaks, the name just kind of drops right to the floor. Does that happen to anybody here? Sure, all of you. And it's embarrassing, isn't it? Kevin, yeah, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin. Yes, Kevin was back on the infomercial circuit, proclaiming that coral calcium could cure cancer. But not just any old coral calcium, obviously. No, the only treatment that really worked was Coral Calcium Supreme, a wildly expensive formula which just happened to be sold by Kevin's good friend and business associate, Bob Barefoot. He sounds like a hippie, doesn't he? What's it with people not wearing shoes? I saw a dude riding the subway the other day who was not wearing shoes. He was like, on an, uh, an elevator and he had these filthy feet and I'm like, you're a disgusting individual. I immediately don't like you. Uh, the only slight niggle is that he wasn't backing up any of these claims with the slightest shred of competent and reliable evidence. The FTC were quick to raise fresh concerns with the US District Court for the Northern District of Illinois. That's a mouthful. Claiming that Kevin had violated the original 1998 injunction. It does seem so, doesn't it? This time the settlement was much more severe, although maybe not quite as severe as it could have been. In 2004, Kevin was fined $2 million and given a lifetime ban on producing infomercials of any kind. Not only is that embarrassing, to you, maybe it's costing you some money. Wait, didn't they try that before? It didn't work. Send him to prison! With one note, it's like, oh my god, America is like, oh yeah, you had a little bit of weed on you. Guess where you're going? Oh, you had a little bit of weed on you three times in a row. Guess where you're going for life! Crazy. Crazy. Release all the people on minor drug offenses. Just do it. Everywhere should do this. And I, I'm picking on America because you're a modern democracy. All of those other countries that are that are, are just less good, you know, where they execute people for drugs, like I don't know, Malaysia or something. Stop that! Shit. It's insane. Simon, dum, 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 dum. you shouldn't be. Dum, dum. You're a British man. You shouldn't be telling how people to run their countries. And I'm like, I feel like when you're executing drug dealers, no, I'm pretty pretty okay telling you what to do or what you should be doing. This 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 will probably age well. With one noticeable exception, the contents of books are protected by the First Amendment, no matter how many ridiculous claims you make within the pages. Is that true? That's insane! Uh, go on to Amazon, see all the books about COVID 5G. All of those books spit truth. St I will put you back in the basement. You can't handle the truth. But the FTC couldn't actually stop Kevin from producing infomercials promoting books, just so long as the infomercials didn't misrepresent the contents. Predictably, it was around this time that Kevin Trudeau found his inner author and decided to share his secrets with a new series of quite staggeringly successful books. It's worth pausing for a moment to explain where exactly Kevin was supposed to have acquired all of this secret knowledge. Well, let me show you how. By using this mind. You see, it turns out that he had been a member of a secret organization called The Brotherhood for 20 years. Look, when something's called the Brotherhood and it's a secret organization, it's not going to be anything good. I promise. The Brotherhood had sought the talents of young Kevin Trudeau when he was in his early 20s, as they felt his, he could use his abilities to increase their own billions and their own power, control, and influence over the masses. Okay, well that just sounds like a lie. Also, I'm just slightly disappointed that I wasn't approached in my mid-20s and someone was like, Simon, we think you have amazing potential. We want you to increase our wealth. We are wise old billionaires and we don't know what we're doing. Look, anyone who's in their early 20s is a f***ing idiot. I mean, if you're watching in your early 20s, don't worry, you've got room to grow. But okay, let's use me as an example. Be like, yeah, hey, 21-year-old Simon, we need your advice. Be like, what the f***? Like, I, in 10 years, I'll be like, I don't need 33-year-old Simon's advice. That guy was a knob. Look at all those videos he made. <laughs> It's not quite clear what services Kevin was meant to have provided, but in return he was furnished with the health secrets and access to the inner circles of the rich and powerful. Oh god, I hope he dies from, like, cancer. <laughs> That's f rough, but I hope he dies, dies from a disease that he was trying to cure, or lying about. Fellow members of the group included politicians, CEOs, celebrities, musicians, writers, scientists, movie stars, and maybe 
even professional YouTubers. Not me, though. I wish. During his time in the Brotherhood, Kevin claims to have been tutored in secret brainwashing techniques which are used in news media, visited factories that were making genetically modified food with the sole purpose of making people fatter, and even taking a tour of Area 51 where he saw working spacecraft and alien bodies with his own two eyes. This all sounds like a giant lie. He apparently saw the light after 20 years and decided to leave the Brotherhood and share their secrets with the rest of the world for the benefit of mankind. We just covered that in class yesterday, or I just read that last night. Just so long as you crossed his palm with silver first. You can't help wondering if the poor deluded man actually managed to convince himself that all of this was completely true. No, he didn't. He's a con man. It's obviously here, isn't it? But let's get back to the printed page. Kevin's first book, Natural Cures They Don't Want You To Know About. Oh, of course people are gonna buy that because people are dumb. Uh, it proved to be a massive hit, and it was heavily promoted on infomercials without any problems. He spent 25 years on the New York Times bestseller list. No, it didn't. And the latest edition claims that the book has now sold over 6 million copies worldwide. Well, 6 million dumb people. Or desperate people. I think I'm probably being too harsh. Desperate people. Like, if you're dying of cancer and all that, you know, actual medical isn't working, you'll be like, I f try anything, to be honest. Uh, yeah, so he's uh, exploiting people's desperation. Great. That's not to say that it didn't attract a fair amount of controversy. During the course of the book, Kevin reveals that sunlight doesn't cause cancer, but sunscreen does. AIDS was a hoax, oh God. And cures for diabetes and other diseases were developed years ago, but withheld from sale as the FDA felt they might harm the drug industry. All of those people who've stumbled across this video are conspiracy theorists. You smash that dislike button. Uh, the book also featured an apparent endorsement on the back from a former FDA commissioner who had actually died three years before the book was published. Despite the fact that the book was clearly just 150 pages of quackery, it was 150 pages of quackery protected by the First Amendment, and the FTC was powerless to stop the endless infomercials that helped to rake in millions of fresh sales. That's outrageous, and it's an abuse of the First Amendment. However, it seems like the FTC was playing the long game and patiently biding their time until they could really stick something on Kevin Trudeau. Ideally, not his massively overpriced biotape, but a bum bum tss. Uh, I hurt my back this weekend, so I'm being a, less, a little bit less vigorous with a bit of bum bum tss. And in the end, the man who spent years peddling scammy products and lies was caught out by something that appears to be little more than a small technicality. One of his later books in 2007 was called The Weight Loss Cure They Don't Want You to Know About. Creative titling there, Kevo. You might have begun to notice something of a pattern forming with these creative titles. Danny and I same page the book was largely a rehash of an old diet technique developed by a british i keep tripping over this cable can you hold this for me thank you found a use for you at last uh by a british doctor in the 1950s which had denounced which had been denounced by the american medical association in 1962 as hazardous to human health and a waste of money but again what's up with british people british doctors like around there's this guy just spreading lies and then there's also the vaccine guy what's his name that cock face um he, he published the fake study about vaccines causing autism and then the, the, the doctor licensing body in the uk was like you're not a doctor anymore uh so he can't practice medicine Rightly so. Uh, but again, the protected content doesn't really come into the equation. It was how Kevin chose to promote the book on his inevitable infomercials. Kevin claims on camera that his amazing new weight loss cure was easy to follow. The protocol can be completed at home, and you don't have to go to a clinic to do it. The FTC argued, well, I don't find, yeah, of course, like this could be said of any weight loss thing. It's like, well, yeah, just uh, exercise and eat less. I mean, that'll work. And uh, you can do that at home. I don't, you don't have to go anywhere special. I mean, you could go to a gym, but it seems like a bit of a waste of time. The FTC argued that it was a breach of the 2004 order because the diet was in fact very complicated and difficult. It involved the administration of enemas, oh my, which can only be carried out by licensed colon therapists and regular injections of hormone human chorionic gonadotropin, which can be administered under supervision from which can only be administered under supervision from a physician. Kevin also claimed that the protocol was not a diet, not an exercise program, not protein portion control not calorie counting, and this didn't involve no crazy potions, powders, or pills. You just gotta flush out your ass and also inject something with the word gonad in it. Sketchy mother I'm sure that's a legitimate chemical for something, but it's got the word gonad in it, so it makes it amusing. Uh, the 2008 criminal, criminal trial in the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Illinois, Kevin was found in contempt of the original 2004 order and ordered not to appear in infomercials in which he had any financial interest for three years. Ban him for life! Come on! Send him to prison! What the f***? 
More importantly than that, he got a fine. And boy, it was a big one. This time, it was $37 million. Oh my god, that's brutal. Not only is that embarrassing to you, maybe it's costing you some money. His assets were later frozen, and he received and a receiver was appointed to identify and catalog Kevin's holdings. That's all well and good, but Kevin didn't seem to have any intentions of paying this hefty fine. That's not necessarily because he was feeling rebellious. He just claimed that he was skint. Back in the 90s, Kevin once claimed he had a net worth of over $200 million, but following this huge fine, he now claims that he didn't have a pot to piss in. Well, it's an interesting strategy, but I mean, they're gonna find out how much money you have eventually. <laughs> it's hard to ascertain exactly how much money Kevin was worth at the time. He squirreled most of his fine finances away in foreign business entities beyond the reach of the US government. But you suspect he probably still had a few quid. Yeah, I'm betting he did. In fact, it was later proved that he had a few quid. Kevin was back in court in 2013, facing accusations that he continued to live a lavish lifestyle while failing to pay a single cent of the $37 million. That doesn't look good though, does it, Kevo? Just flee the country, it's time to go. It was claimed that he was hiding all his wealth in shell companies while happily spending $2,000 on cigar, liquor, $400 on two haircuts. Now, and over a thousand dollars on meat sword and on lines. Line, I bet it was Trump steaks. <laughs> Although Kevin tried charming the judge with polite protestations of protestations of innocence and pleas for leniency and empty promises to try harder in the future, dude, you've been given so many chances. The judge wasn't having any of it, and he described Kevin as deceitful to the core. He said, This is not an infomercial, Mr. Trudeau. You can't talk your way out of this one. I'm not sure this judge knows what an infomercial is, though. In 2014, Kevin was found in contempt of the court's asset freeze and receivership. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison to be served at Federal Prison Camp Montgomery in Alabama. The guy who got away with selling bucket loads of alternative secrets and solutions and sh for years and years was ultimately put in the slammer for claiming that he, his stolen 50-year-old weight loss protocol was a bit easier than it really was, and then hiding all his wealth so he didn't have to pay a hefty fine. Well, yeah, it seems like not paying the fine and continuing to be lavish seems really why they were like, all right, f it, you go to prison then, bitch. Happy now? It's interesting to ponder that Kevin could probably reduce his jail time if, he own, if his own memory techniques uh, to remember exactly where he'd hidden all of his millions of dollars. But he doesn't seem to be in a rush to do this. Instead, he spends most of his time, write, time writing letters to President Trump asking for a pardon and running a Facebook page in which he asks for donations to his defense fund and compares his plight to that of Nelson Mandela. Oh, dude, no, just no. And if that opening scene set in corporate company corporation prison may seem a bit far-fetched, it's maybe not a million miles away from the truth. Sometimes it doesn't seem so. One of Kevin's best buddies in prison is none other than the former CEO of Enron, Jeff Skilling, who I think is out of prison now. So he doesn't have his friend anymore. Anyway, this has been Business Place. Thank you so much for watching and uh, subscribe. Perch the merch. How about Jack for number five?